Okay. Hi, Christina. Welcome back. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back. Well, it seems like, as we were talking about before we got on, it seems like you were just on, but you were actually on the audio podcast a couple of months ago, I think. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I was on video, I think it was earlier in the year or last year. Gosh, time goes by so fast. Right. You were on the video show once before. We looked it up because we have to title these correctly. If we put you up as Christina Rienzi, it won't take because you're already on. So this one has to, has to be number two in the title. And we looked it up and it's been like exactly a year. You were on De wow. December 2020. So welcome back. Your book that we talked about when you were on last time was Among Us, right? Yes, that was my fiction. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was that's about aliens. Yeah. So it's a government conspiracy thriller, right, which touches upon otherworldly beings for sure. Um, yes. Fast paced thriller. And um, that came out a couple of years ago, actually, but was featured um, on Audible's ACX University as well as an editor select pick. So that has been kind of a favorite on the Audible in the Audible world and um, just a book that a thriller that was close to my heart. Really fun to write. So this wasn't one of those UFO personal encounter documentary no. type books because we're getting a lot of those surprisingly enough. So you've never seen yeah, no. aliens, right? You've never seen a UFO they or aliens? I have not. No, I write from a fiction standpoint. Actually, a lot of the research I did for that book was uh, around the Freedom of Information Act and government documents that have been released into the public. And I took, you know, the stance of let me look into these documents a little bit and turn a story out of them. What I think the truth is and what might be if something like this did occur and it was a, a you know, a hidden secret um, amongst the government. And so that's kind of the, the route I went. But yes, I personally have not had any experiences. Well, the idea of a government conspiracy is probably not that far off from the truth anyways. Uh, right, so. right. And you know, I always think about that, like what and, and that was a big basis for the book too. What is the truth? What is fiction? Right? What should we know? What do we know? And you know, we don't know as much as we think we do. So I left it at that. And I kind of explored that. But absolutely, anything that's secret and, and clandestine and hidden, um, you know, that's gonna that, that kind of stuff is going to be going on. Now, if it's going on about aliens, I don't know. But that's what my book's about. And your book that we're going to talk about today is called Five Happy Choices. And yes, you said that it went right to number one bestseller when you put it out? Yeah, I do. You know what? It's funny. It's I've been working on this for about a year and a half. It's been a long, uh, a long time. I did a lot of research. I took, you know, courses. I got certified in happiness studies. And by the way, happiness is a field of study in positive psychology. And I do have my master's in psychology. So with the pandemic, I decided, let me, um, you know, explore psychology again and, and well-being and things of that nature. So yeah, it took me a long time and I wasn't sure when I was going to release it. My goal was really this year, but I thought, um, I didn't know that that was going to happen, but it did. And I, we decided that we would put it up for pre-order on Black Friday because I thought, you know what, it's a great time of year to just see what people are out there. They're looking for things, you know, they're looking for books, they're looking for gifts, they're looking for a, a pick-me-up around the holidays for sure. And I did, I just on a fluke, I put it um, up for pre-order. It, it releases officially February 1st. And I was shocked. Um, and surprised to find out the next day when I checked my rankings that it was the number one new release, still is, in Applied Psychology. And it hit the bestseller list in both Applied Psychology and Happiness. And just to give you an idea of what that means, uh, people really close to me, like I always look at the books around me, like who am I in this category with? And Malcolm Gladwell was right there next to me with David and Goliath. So it was a big deal. Wow. Um, and, you know, I, I honestly have no idea how it happens. Um, I think it's probably a combination of people following me and knowing, you know, who I am and what I write and, and reading my blog and my newsletter and, and encounter, you know, being, you know, in my world and knowing um, that this is a passion of mine and also a combination of people needing a little lift and pick me up, especially this time of year. Well, that's for sure. And for what we've been through for the past 18 months with COVID, I think people need, sure. need all the uh, happiness they can get at this point. Absolutely, for sure. One, one thing, though, that 
your name is probably getting out there because you're doing a lot of PR like this show. And I know I've seen on your social media, you've done other shows, other podcasts. It is, so it does work. I mean, people think, oh, I, I never get any book sales when I go on these shows. But you'd be surprised. You know, it gets out there. It trickles out. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great point because I, you know, I, it's not that I, I recognize, you know, I'm out there talking to, to different people on podcasts like you and just trying to get the word out about what I do and how I can be of help. You know, my focus has been nonfiction the past year or so. And just talking about it, I think, helps when people hear, you know, on a video interview or a podcast. And it does. You create a network, you create relationships, you make connections, and they aren't all about selling books. I look at it as these are the people that I'm going to reach and touch and hopefully help. And even if they don't buy a book of mine necessarily, they may join my newsletter and get something out of that, or they may follow me on Instagram and get something out of that. And I think the whole reason we write, at least for me, the reason I write thrillers for sure is because I love them and I love to be entertained and I want to entertain people, right? And I also want to get their heart pumping and get them excited and help them overcome fears. That's part of the thriller process when you are reading a thriller or writing a thriller. But for nonfiction, my goal is really connecting. It's helping and connecting others and using my education, experience, knowledge to help people. And that is who I've been always. Fiction is a passion of mine, but I've always been this person who's wanted to help. And that's where my career has led me down different paths of doing that. So yeah, getting on these shows is so helpful because I think not only is it getting my name out there for that purpose, maybe somebody hears something I say and it's helpful to them and it gets them through something. And that's really what this is all about for me. Well, that's a good point. Um, I think that when people start out as authors, as with musicians or with filmmakers or any creative art, I think your head needs to be in the right place in the sense that you don't go into this business with the idea of, oh, I'm going to make lots of money. That's not why you do it. You do it because you love it or because, like you said, you're writing to try to help other people get through hard mm -hmm. times. And yes, you know, for sure. of course you want to sell books. Of course you want to make money. But that can't be the primary objective. No, it's so true because I think about people who jokingly, and I'm sure we've all, all of our us writers out there have had these people in our lives that have said, well, when I retire, I'm going to write a book. Or in my spare time, I'm going to write a book. Or over this summer, I'm, I should write a book. And it all sounds great in theory. But really, the books that are the most touching and the most loved come from authors, and this is my opinion, who have a passion for for writing, who have a passion for telling a story, whether it's a nonfiction story or a fiction story, they truly love it because we all know as writers, writing is hard work. It's not just about getting your story out. There's so many other facets to it. And if it isn't who you truly are and what you truly want to do, it gets exhausting pretty quickly, especially when you put your first book out and nothing happens. And <laughs> that happens a lot to people. It's like, Oh my God, this wasn't well received. Others do put their book out there and something happens. But I think what we don't see as readers before we were writers is the people who make it, there are very few people who are like instant successes out of nowhere, right? But usually it's like 20 years in the making. And I always say that like, I know people who are, are super successful, but they, it took them a long time. It took them a lot of work and they stuck in there the whole way because what they truly wanted to do was tell a story. They have a passion for writing in their spare time, like me. In my spare time, what do I do? I take classes. I take classes in writing. I take classes in psychology. I take classes in happiness. I get certifications because I love it. Not because I'm trying to sell a happiness book because let's face it, I could do all these things and nothing happen, right? Um, and not because I'm an expert in happiness, but because I have a passion for these things and I want to share what I know with people and maybe help. Um, and so, yeah, it's whatever you do in life, be it writing or music or business, if you have a love for it, the success and money, if that's what you're looking for, that comes down the road when you stick with something you love and you put your heart and soul into it and you do the best that you can. Now, we all know artists, right? They say the starving artist is, <laughs> people say starving artist for a reason. And I think it's because just like in anything in life, there is no guarantee. So you must absolutely put your heart and soul into your work when you're an artist. And I, I think, you know, certainly writers are artists. Oh, absolutely. They're creative artists. Mm -hmm. um, but there's this whole 
other side of doing business as an artist that came about really with the internet and DIY that I think is just creating more work. I don't know if it increased. See, this is an argument that I have on the show with other people who come on is we say, well, has the internet really made it better for creative artists? Because now you can put your book out on Kindle where before you had to sort of go down on your knees at a big publisher and beg them and hope that they liked your work and would want to take you. Uh, and most of them, 90% or something, were thrown in the bin, right? Yeah. And they didn't even read them. So yes, you can get your stuff out there, but now there's so much stuff out there. Is anybody going to find it? Yeah, that is such a great point. And I think it's, I don't know that it's better or worse, but different. And I think you've got to find your way. And I know a lot of people who, listen, I know people who are super successful at indie publishing. I know people super successful at traditional publishing. I know people super successful at a combination. Everyone's path is different. And I think if there was no internet and there was no, or even Amazon, you know, or, or, or Barnes and Noble and all of these places didn't allow you, let's say self-publishing went out the window and they said, you're not allowed to upload a manuscript on your own. You need to use a publisher and you need to have a letter from your agent or whatever. People would still write. I, and we would still do this. The ones who don't have the passion for it would give up. But I mean, I can tell you, I, I can um, name off at, at least 10 friends who have been doing nothing but pitching agents and publishers and are finally getting traction all these years because their writing has gotten better, their stories are more marketable. Now they have the agent of their dreams and they're getting the publishing contracts and that's great for them. Um, and what I'm doing is great for me and I've done that. I've had a publisher before. Um, so you just have to do what's right for you. I think the, the better of it all, honestly, is that there's more options. People have choices. And um, if you truly are in it for getting your story out in the world, indie publishing can do that for you. It doesn't guarantee you know, you're going to be New York Times bestseller by any means, but neither does a traditional publisher. So it's all about choices. And I like that there's more choices, but you're right. It's harder to be seen because there's so much volume. You get lost. So it is important to connect with people, develop real relationships. They take time and effort. And if you're just writing a book and you're like, I don't want to do social media, I don't want to connect, chances of you finding somebody who's going to read your work are really hard. So you've got to really be in it like 100 percent in every angle. Well, that's true. And, you know, if you've got some money, you can always hire people to do that stuff for you if it's really something you're just not into doing. But you still yes. got to do it. It's got to get done one way or the other. Either you do it or somebody else is going to do it for you. Yes. Absolutely. And the building relationships really you can only do for yourself. I mean, you can have somebody post your posts for you, but they have to be authentic and come from your heart. And the, and I know for fiction and nonfiction, the successful people are present. They're present online. They talk to their readers. They do Zooms. They have Facebook groups or they have an Instagram live. And that's how they connect. And nowadays, because of the Internet, readers expect the author to show up. They want to see your face. They want to hear your voice. They want to know who you are um, to a certain extent. And I think that is different from prior years, you know, many years ago when it was just about the book, the publisher and selling and maybe doing a book signing at Barnes and Noble or going to independent bookstores and you see the author there, right? Now you have to be present online as much as you possibly can to connect. So it is an added level, I feel like, of responsibility. But I don't, you know, as a reader, I want to see my authors too. So I get it. Yeah. Well, you know what? We are out of time just like that. Goes so quick on the video show. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on. Do you have a website you want to give out? Sure. Absolutely. It's my first and last name dot com, Christina Rienzi dot com. And you can get all the information you need there. My books, my newsletter and um, my blog and everything. OK, great. So five happy choices will be officially out when? February 1st. Right now it's on pre-order on Amazon. It's a pre-order special price of 99 cents. So if you pre-order it now, it'll be 99 cents and delivered to you on February 1st. Um, and then February 1st it will come out ebook, print, and hopefully audio. We're working on that. All right, Christina. Thank you so much. For